President Obama is doing something positive. Great, hey, for the American workers, for jobs, terrific, okay? Uh, he, what he did was he decided, hey, I'm gonna change a, a piece of regulation that affects how much overtime people can get paid in different categories. So I'll let the Hill explain here. Current regulations require employers to pay overtime to salaried workers making less than $455 a week. Obama's proposal would redefine which employees can be classified as executive or professional and thus ineligible for overtime pay. Now, if you're confused by that, don't be. It's very simple, actually. What a lot of companies do, especially the fast food chains, is they call you management even though you're no such thing, so that they don't have to abide by the rules saying that if you ha are going into overtime, you're gonna have, be, have to be paid extra, or paid at all. They say, well, you're a manager, man. You don't get paid for overtime. Here, a little bit more explanation from the Hill. The action would expand the sphere of eligible employees to include, for instance, fast food shift supervisors and some office workers now being denied overtime pay. Apparently, fast food companies are legendary for calling people assistant managers, which just means that we get to screw you more. Okay, oh, I got promoted! <laughs> that means you work overtime for free. Well, not anymore. In fact, this law could affect 10 million workers. So, obviously, there's not gonna be a lot of people who are going to be justly paid for the overtime that they are working. Great, so who's mad about it? Of course, Fox News. So let's go to actually one of their most annoying on-air contributors. I know that's a tough title to grab at Fox News, Stuart Varney. I think we should put this in perspective. In my opinion, yeah. this is a vast expansion of the government's power to dictate income in the private sector. Mm. This is redistribution by executive order. So the president is saying, yeah. you will do this. So you don't think this helps the economy? No, I don't think it helps the economy mm. at all. <laughs> I love how Bill Hammer plays the straight man there on Fox News. So, softball, you don't think this helps the economy? No, I don't. Oh, really? Oh, that's interesting. Wow, okay, Obama hurting the economy. You heard it here first on Fox News. Well, we did hear it on Fox News, <laughs> yes, that's for sure. All right, now to the heart of the argument. Oh, wealth redistribution. See, Stewart's uh, pissed because he thought that was only for Republicans. Now you're supposed to redistribute the wealth to the top. You're supposed to lower the taxes on the rich, lower the taxes on corporations. You're supposed to give them subsidies, like $4 billion at a bare minimum that we give the oil companies every single year in subsidies. That redistribution of wealth, Stuart Varney loves, but if you're actually trying to help, and by the way, in this case, middle class workers, ah, oh, the bums. <laughs> yeah, of course, they want more money for their work. But not only is it work, not only are they obviously employed, it's overtime work. People who are working really hard. And Stuart Varney's like, no, 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 they shouldn't get it. They shouldn't get it. That's redistribution. It should be in my pocket and my buddy's pockets. Who, who likes these guys? You watch Fox News. Are you all millionaires or billionaires? If this guy's trying to deny you overtime that you justly worked for, and you're like, oh, I don't do that. Stuart Varney, oh, good, good point. Yeah, you should take my money and give it to millionaires. Yes, yeah, yeah, quite right. Here's more from this ass. Why should an employer expand in this environment when he's being told by the government you've got to pay more for health care you've got to pay more in salary you've got to pay more in wages why would you expand your business when your cost of labor is going straight through the roof well because you've got a good business going for example we're growing here at the young turks at no time have we had a conversation about well if we hire someone new we'd have to pay them of course, of course you'd have to pay them. That's because you're expanding. That's a good thing. And nobody ever says in an expanding business, hey, you know what? Let's stop expanding. Let's stop trying to make money. Let's stop trying to grow our business because then we would have to share it with the people who actually work in the business. Like, do you take into account the uh, amount of money you pay people? Of course you do, right? But if there's a minimum wage, you pay it. If, you, if somebody worked overtime, you pay it. Unless there's a different situation. For example, this still, don't get this wrong. This still does not apply to actual managers. P people in, that have stock options or in management, or likely this won't affect anyone making above $50,000. They haven't set the number yet, but that's likely to be the number. So it's only for people making under $50,000 who are working hard to try to get more money for their family. Okay, oh no, no, I do declare, no. All businesses will stop immediately and say, we, uh, we don't want to make money anymore because uh, Obama's hurt our feelings with this overtime pay. Okay, more from this genius. Now the other side of the coin is, the president is buying votes. He is commanding higher salaries for millions of people right before an election. 
Don't you think that those millions of people will be grateful and say, thanks for the pay raise, Mr. President, I'm voting Democrat. Mm. Don't you think that's in there? That's an interesting point as well. If I was president of the United States facing a very difficult election, I would do precisely this and I would say, do it now because it is buying votes. Well, that's exactly what you would do. In fact, that's what the Republicans do all the time. They go and they do favors for the people who get them into office. Now, in the case of President Obama and the Democrats, from time to time, it's the actual voters. In the case of Republicans, it's donors. Do they do them special favors? As a regular course of business. That's why Stuart Barney says, well, if I was him, I would try to bribe people, because that's what conservatives do. They shouldn't, as a conservative in ideology, you shouldn't do that at all. But present-day Republicans, they love that. So, but this is his way of saying, you know what he's doing here, trying to bribe poor people. <laughs> no, please. Like, as, again, as if they're bums, when in fact they're working and they're working overtime. So, Look, is there some politics involved in this move? There's politics involved in every move, okay? Don't be naive about that. But it is a move on policy grounds that actually helps working Americans. Great! Of course, that's why Fox News is equally upset about it. And Bill Hammer, what the, uh, oh, oh, really? Oh, the straight man. Oh, yeah, oh, it's hurting everything, right? Obama sucks, right? Stuart Varney, oh, yeah, yeah, good point. Oh, yeah, no, no businesses will hire. You're right, Stuart. Yeah, that's a, mm mm-hmm. Here I am, news anchor, right? All right, one last one from this ass. Let me take you back to Google, okay? In the, in the early days of Google, they had all kinds of youngsters, up and coming strivers who would work day and night. So that's how they built the company. Tech startups with a really a drive to succeed and climb that food chain. Now, if you bring this in, those high tech workers who started all these brilliant companies, they'll be on the clock. Instead of these overnight creative meetings, they'll be saying, oh, I just, uh, I just exceeded my 40 hours, I am due overtime. And if I don't get it, I'm gonna sue. Can you imagine the number of retroactive lawsuits from all kinds of people who were eligible for overtime, didn't get it, and now say, come on, pay up. This is supposed to be like a business analyst for them. That's not how Google worked at all. Those guys had stock options, so they, they weren't like, workers who are flipping burgers or cooking the french fries or rearranging the shelves on Walmart, and they all got incredibly wealthy. The youngsters who were striving in the beginning are now millionaires. So you don't know what the hell you're talking about. His, the whole point of Stuart Barney is to come out there and bash anyone who's a middle-class American if you're trying to help them and find a way to shovel the money to his millionaire and billionaire friends. He's a despicable guy. The other day he came out and was outraged that some uh, governors, including some Republican governors, were helping p- keep people on uh, food stamps. He's like, oh, I do declare we should take the food right out of their mouths. He's like, how else will we replace that $8 million over 10 years? How else? I got plenty of ways. Like I said, at a bare minimum, the oil subsidies are $4 billion a year. I've seen numbers up to $14 billion a year. But let's take the minimum number. Two years of oil subsidies. Get rid of it. Boom. That's 10 years of food stamps. But of course, Stuart Barney would find that outrageous. How dare you touch his oil baron friends in order to help poor and middle class people actually working for a living. 